from where does food come from so we are going to discuss food chapter of class 6th so let's begin with the nutrients as we know that there are various nutrients in our food which are necessary to give energy for body building for growth for repair for aging so there are various things which are involved in this let us discuss about the nutrients what is food and what are the nutrients if we talk about human body food is a kind of a fuel for the body fuel for the body we cannot live without food and all these nutrients carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals minerals as well as water protein and roughage all are included in our food whenever you take a piece of bread or a piece of biscuit or some kind of food all these nutrients are at once included in that if i talk about your meal if whole of the meal you are talking about everything in your meal includes all these nutrients the carbohydrates fats vitamins minerals water protein and roughage let's talk about the energy giving foods carbohydrates and fats are the only foods which provide energy carbohydrate provide 17 kJ of energy per gram and fats provide 37 kJ energy per gram so we can say that carbohydrates and fats are energy giving foods and they have nothing to do with body building with protection etc if a person takes more amount of carbohydrates obviously the energy level would increase but if we compare this with fats then in case of fats fats is providing more better energy as compared to carbohydrate so suppose if a person is not exercising properly or if a person is not working properly and only consuming more amount of fatty food such a person can lead to obesity that is motapa and this will only happen if a person is taking more amount of energy rich foods so if you are taking more amount of fats it is necessary that you should work very hard or you should try to get rid of that extra energy from your body now let's come to the vitamins and the minerals vitamins and minerals are required by our body in negligible amounts let me little bit of amount too much of iron not safe too much of copper not safe too much of iodine not safe similarly too much of high levels of vitamins is not going to put any kind of effect on your body but the deficiency will so if i talk about vitamins there are various types of vitamins in your body like a b c d e and k and you require all these vitamins you require vitamin a for proper vision b for proper skin tone and health c for proper immunity and wound repairing d for proper health for proper bones strong bones vitamin e for your skin beauty hair nails etc and vitamin k for blood clotting that means in case if you um get some kind of wound or bleeding so vitamin k that is uh, this particular vitamin is going to help you in healing of that wound so this is how vitamins in small amounts is required by our body on the other hand let's talk about minerals if we talk about minerals we mean to say iodine we mean to say copper we mean to say iron etc these all are minerals let's talk about iron iron is very necessary for our body because it is a component of hemoglobin hemoglobin that is red colored blood so when we talk about hemoglobin let's break the word hemo plus globin globin means protein and hemo means iron <coughs> so iron is necessary for formation of hemoglobin and hemoglobin is a colored pigment of your body which is necessary for breathing purposes respiration purposes carrying oxygen from lungs to the tissues carrying carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs so this is how hemoglobin would play a very important role in your body and for the production of hemoglobin you need iron you need iron so this is how iron plays a very important uh, role in your body it's a it's an important component of your diet on the other hand you have copper copper has a major role to perform it 
uh, performs a major role in formation of your um, uh, DNA, it uh, has a major role in formation of uh, cells, the cell walls. So this is how copper is also important component of your body, but not as important as iron. On the other hand, we have iodine. Iodine is a major mineral which is necessary for your thyroid gland. Here you have a gland called thyroid. This thyroid gland has a major role to perform in metabolism, in metabolism. So if the body metabolism, the body working, the body workouts all are properly balanced, it is because of thyroid. Thyroid does not require anything, it just requires one thing for its proper functioning that is iodine. If there is, a, if there is less iodine in your body, this thyroid gland, it will swell up, it will swell up, it will become so big just like a football. It will, it will swell up like this. That means this neck region is going to come like this. So this swelling is goiter, goiter. It's a kind of a disease which is more prevalent in hilly areas. You should have little bit of iodine in your salt because there is no other way by which iodine can enter your body. Yes, one way is there. That is coastal area food. Now many of you might be vegetarian. You don't eat fish, you don't eat meat, you don't eat eggs. And you don't eat crabs and lobsters, oysters, obviously you don't. So if you're not eating all these fish foods or all these seafoods, that means there can be a deficiency of iodine in your body. But thanks to the salt company, which is including iodine in your salt, so that if you are a vegetarian, you don't need to worry about uh, the less iodine in your body because you're not taking any um, seafood. So you just need to have a good amount of iodine in your salt. So salt should be iodized. So that particular iodized salt will give iodine to your uh, to your uh, thyroid and the thyroid will, will perform beautifully. So this is how uh, iodine is again a must for thyroid gland which releases thyroxine. Thyroxine is the hormone which is helpful for metabolism and proper well growth of your body. Now let us come to water. Water is a regulatory food that means it what is the role of water in your body? Obviously, you know that the role is to transport materials from one point to another, transport of minerals and materials. What else? It also helps to form our enzymes, saliva, blood, tears, etc. So, it is a major component of transport. On the other hand, it is also necessary for immunity. If we have good amount of water in our body, our immunity would also be good. On the other hand, we have protein. Protein is a bodybuilding food. Bodybuilding means uh, just imagine if this building is my body, if this building where I am standing right now is my body. So what are proteins? Proteins are the bricks, they are the bricks, bricks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 100 bricks, 1000 bricks, million bricks. So I am made up of millions of bricks, all these millions of bricks of my body. So proteins are the building blocks of your life. They help in bodybuilding, may it be internal organs, may it be external organs, may it be your hair, may it be your nails, etc. So protein help in bodybuilding, they also help our body for defense. How, how come for defense? Like suppose if you are having a good skin, so obviously there will be no kind of uh, microbes, etc. entering into your body. So proteins, they help in bodybuilding, they make the structure of your body, they, they give you shape, they give you immunity, they give you health, they give you uh, proper sense organs. So protein have a major role. Apart from this, they also have a little bit of role in the formation of cell membranes also. This is something additional that I am telling you. And the last but not the least is roughage. Roughage. Now what about roughage? What does the roughage do? Roughage obviously cellulose. So roughage is uh, rough, that is a waste of your body. So what is the waste of your body? Whatever food you are eating, it has plant cells. All plant cells have cell wall, all cell wall have cellulose and human body cannot digest cellulose. So if you are eating a piece of bread, you are eating atta, you are eating maida and that atta or maida is plant cell and each atta maida wala plant cell is going to have cellulose and this cellulose this particular cellulose cannot be digested by our body. Sorry, we do not have any enzymes to digest cellulose. That is why whatever you are eating will get collected in your intestine and the next day it will come out in the form of excreta. So people would be thinking that if roughage is not digested by our body, why do we need it? Why do we need it? We need roughage so that the elementary system keeps working. 
the elementary canal should keep working. So, the major role of roughage is to maintain our digestive system, to maintain our elementary canal. Second, it helps in easy absorption of water and minerals because of roughage. And third, which is most important, because of roughage, we feel a kind, we feel a kind of gratification or satisfaction when you have had your food. You get that feeling of fullness. You are having the feeling of uh, your tummy is full. That feeling of fullness or the feeling of gratification and satisfaction of having food is only because of roughage. Roughage increases bulk of food. It increases the volume of food and it keeps you uh, filled. It, keep, it gives you a feeling of fullness and satisfaction. So, this is uh, the discussion of class 6th food chapter. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about, sorry, delete kar dena ye. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about the components of food of class 6, this is NCRT, components of food chapter 2, class 6. So, today we will be discussing about what are the components of food and how do they work in our body. When we talk about components of food, there are various components which help us making our food. So, various components means when we talk about components, we mean to say nutrients, we mean to say nutrients and when we talk about nutrients, what are the various nutrients? Let us classify them. So, if we keep on classifying the nutrients, we will find that nutrients are of four types. The first one is energy giving nutrients energy giving nutrients. Another is body building nutrients. Let us classify them. Body building nutrients. The next one is regulatory nutrients and the last one is protective nutrient. Protective. Protective means for protection. So, let us see what are the energy giving nutrients of your body. Fats provide energy to our body and carbohydrates are also energy giving nutrients. Carbohydrates include glucose, it includes fructose, it includes maltose, sucrose, lactose etc. Lactose is from milk that we get fructose is from fruit and glucose is from cane sugar obviously sugar cane cane sugar one and the same thing so here we have glucose fructose and lactose which are the detailed forms of carbohydrates and we require them in proper amounts in proper amounts when we talk about fats it is a major nutrient which comprises of fatty acids fatty acids and glycerol so when a fat breaks in our body it gives fatty acids and glycerol and when carbohydrates break in our body, they give glucose. So, if we talk about fats and carbohydrates while break down, do they yield some kind of energy? Yes. See right, right now I am teaching you, I am speaking, I am moving my fingers, I am moving my limbs, arms, I am moving from here to there, my heart is beating, my lungs are working, right. So, that means, that means I am releasing out the energy all of carbohydrate that means carbohydrate and fats are responsible to yield energy in my body. I am alive because of carbohydrate and fat no other thing is providing nourishment and nutrients to my body sorry energy from nowhere energy from only two places that is carbohydrates and fats. Fats give more energy 37 kilojoule energy as discussed in the previous chapter and carbohydrates 17 kilojoule energy per gram per gram. Okay, let us come to the bodybuilding nutrients. Bodybuilding nutrients are those which are the building blocks of life. They help in making tissues, they help in making cells. Let us come to the bigger one. After tissues, they help in making organs. So, your stomach, your lungs, the walls, 
all are made up of proteins only your saliva your tears your enzymes may it be of the bile that is from the liver may it be of your um, hydrochloric acid in your stomach may it be intestinal juices in your intestine may it be all kinds of mucus in your nose everything is actually the body building protein is protein only responsible for building the body can you imagine that if protein are the building blocks of life that means if they are the bricks so you know in order to keep the bricks in position what do you require what do you require you require cement so similarly if you require bricks of proteins for your body then the cementing materials are minerals so minerals also help in building your body they build your body many kind of minerals take an example if i talk about an rbc what is an rbc red blood cell red blood cell i say red blood cell is made up of protein how the disc like rbc the disc like wbc the disc like platelet cells are actually protein cells but in rbc we are having iron also so iron plus disc like protein forms rbc so red blood cells have hemoglobin now let's split this word hemo iron globin protein that means here you can see that the rbcs are made up of protein rbcs are made up of protein so protein can be the building block of life majorly and minerals also iron is a mineral and it is useful for uh, formation of rbc potassium is a mineral it is useful for formation of wbc and your antibodies can you imagine magnesium is a mineral it is responsible for a uh, formation of your antibodies that fight against diseases and provide immunity phosphorus and calcium they are minerals and they are responsible for giving strength to your bones that is why we say calcium and phosphorus are necessary for providing strength to our bones so this is how we can prove that minerals also help in building the body another is regulatory nutrients which do not remain in our body so what are the new two nutrients which don't remain in your body the first one is the water of course and cellulose or fiber or a roughage this is what you have been doing so far in your younger classes cellulose roughage fiber waste all these things are what are these things these are the regulatory force they will come they will enter your body they will perform their function they will go out as excreta okay so regulatory uh, foods they don't remain in your body on the other hand water is necessary for transport if you don't take enough amount of water your transport system of your body would be badly affected may it be related to your blood supply may it be related to your lymph supply may it be related to your brain for proper functioning of brain digestive system tears ears and uh, body and liver each and every cell wants water jal hi jeevan hai this is one of the reasons why jal hi jeevan hai because if you want to remain zinda if you want to re uh, remain alive you require water as major component in your food okay so here we come to uh, water as a regulatory food as well as roughage and last but not the least are the protective ones here we include two major things that is the vitamins and the minerals vitamins are required by our body in very very small amounts if in any case you get a deficiency of any kind of vitamin or mineral in your body we will get the grab of diseases we will get grab of diseases we will get very dangerous diseases we will contract them if the vitamins and the minerals are not provided by provided to our body let's see which one let's talk about the vitamin a if vitamin a you don't take enough amount of vitamin a that means if you are not taking good amount of carrot good amount of leafy vegetables then the person can contract a deficiency if the person doesn't take then what's the deficiency deficiency that means if there is a less amount of vitamin a in your body which kind of deficiency disease would you get you would get xerothalmia now what's that word xerothalmia means night blindness night blindness so if a person is not taking enough amount of vitamin a in his body the person is more prone to contract this dangerous disease in night blindness what is the disease about in this disease a person cannot see during the evening hours jaise sham ho gayi 
सनलाइट की अवेलेबिलिटी नहीं है तो इवनिंग आवर्स के टाइम पर ये पर्सन देख नहीं पाएगा ठीक से दिस पर्सन नीड्स नेचुरल लाइट सो नाइट ब्लाइंडनेस इज वन ऑफ द डिजीजेज विच इज कॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द लेस अमाउंट ऑफ विटामिन ए इन योर बॉडी और कम अमाउंट ऑफ विटामिन ए मीन्स नाइट ब्लाइंडनेस मतलब शाम को दिखना बंद ओके okay? तो जब अगले दिन सुबह होगी तो फिर दिखेगा ओके okay? क्या करें विटामिन ए लीजिए होना ही क्यों था ये प्रॉपर कैरेट ग्रीन लीफी वेजिटेबल्स एग्स वगैरह अपने बॉडी में आपने प्रॉपरली प्रोवाइड करना है प्रॉपरली आपने सोर्सेज लेने हैं फिर ये डिजीज नहीं होगी जेरो थालमिया इज द प्रॉपर साइंटिफिक बायोलॉजिकल नेम फॉर नाइट ब्लाइंडनेस इसका सिर्फ एक ही इलाज है इस पर्सन को हाई अमाउंट ऑफ विटामिन ए दे दीजिए और इस पर्सन को ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी नाइट ब्लाइंडनेस की ओके लेट्स कम टू बी ये होल सीरियल्स में पल्सिस में हाई अमाउंट में आपको मिलेगा सोया में प्रोटीन के साथ साथ विटामिन बी विटामिन बी यू कैन गेट फ्रॉम यूर अगर विटामिन ए विटामिन बी की कमी हो जाती है बॉडी में तो कौन सी बीमारियां हो सकती हैं बेरी बेरी हो सकता है राइबोफ्लेविनोसिस हो, हो सकता है राइबोफ्लेविनोसिस ओके अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट्स पेलेग्रा हो सकता है इनमें से बेरी बेरी और पेलेग्रा स्किन से रिलेटेड प्रॉब्लम्स हैं राइबोफ्लेविनोसिस इज रिलेटेड टू योर लिप्स क्रैकिंग ऑफ लिप्स अकर इफ देर इज लेस अमाउंट ऑफ विटामिन बी इन योर बॉडी तो दालें छिलके वाली दालें ज़रूर खाइए प्रोटीन वाली चीज़ें ज़रूर खाइए उससे आपकी स्किन हेल्दी रहेगी और ये लिप्स का क्रैक हो जाना एक होता है सर्दियों में लिप्स फट जाना दैट्स अनदर थिंग ठीक है चैप्ड लिप्स दैट्स अनदर थिंग बट द कॉर्नर्स गेटिंग क्रैक फ्रॉम बोथ साइड्स इज अ मेजर इशू दिस दिस शोज दैट यू डोंट हैव प्रॉपर अमाउंट ऑफ विटामिन बी इन योर बॉडी सो दिस इज इट वेन यू टॉक अबाउट राइबोफ्लेविनोसिस वेरी वेरी एंड पेलेग्रा दे आर द डेंजरस डिजीजेज which can be caused if there is a deficiency of vitamin b in your body you have to take proper amount of sources let's talk about vitamin c vitamin c is present in all citrus fruits citrus fruits means khatte phal theek hai na mango apple banana lychee green chilies coriander green leafy vegetables yes vitamin c is present in leaves and apart from that lemon oranges mangoes all are all khatte phal come under citrus fruits even amla a good source of vitamin c if a person is taking good amount of vitamin c your skin would be good your immunity def- like your resistance to fight against diseases would be very good uh blood clotting would be nice and you will not easily contract diseases whenever there is a change of weather so the person can have good immunity he will not suffer if anybody sneezes or if anybody coughs the person can fight against disease in any any kind of external bacteria getting into the body so thanks to vitamin c who is helping this out another thing if what happens if vitamin c becomes deficient in the body if vitamin c becomes deficient the disease that we are going to get is scurvy scurvy as you can see is because of deficiency of vitamin c If a person is not taking a good amount of vitamin C, the person will not have good immunity. The person will not have good resistance. The person will not be able to fight against diseases. And on the other hand, the person's gums, masoodi, and dant, teeth will become loose. Gums will start bleeding. The gums will leave the teeth. Teeth will start coming off, shedding off the teeth. Okay. And what about the gums? The gums will become bleeding. They will become very red. So if you're if you are brushing your teeth you are getting a lot of blood out this shows that somewhere vitamin c is deficient in your body so here we come to uh, the deficiency of the major vitamins let's come to vitamin d which is again a very good thing for your bones and your teeth vitamin d is usually present in milk and milk products as well as eggs also but milk and milk products are the major source of vitamin d if in any case a person becomes deficient in vitamin d the person will suffer from rickets rickets is usually a disease caused to children rickets rickets what happens in rickets if a person is deficient in vitamin d the child's legs will become deformed like this deformed 
bow shaped legs bow shaped if the person is having child is having deficiency of vitamin d bow shaped legs curved legs sometimes this this can also happen like this that means there is a, the, the the child cannot hold the weight of the body and that is why either the legs will become like this or it will go outways okay and if the same disease occurs to old people it is called osteomalacia so osteomalacia is a disease caused because of deficiency of vitamin d but this is in adults osteomalacia in adults and rickets in children same problem deficiency of vitamin d on the other hand let's come to vitamin e vitamin e is necessary for skin vitamin e is present in milk products in cheese in butter vitamin e and if a person does not have good amount of vitamin e in his body then the person will have skin troubles skin problems skin troubles okay so here we go along with vitamin e the next one is vitamin k vitamin k is necessary for clotting it is present in vitamin k is present in meat in whole grams in cereals as well as in stem of many plants so if you are having a good amount of these foods in your body so there are less chances that you would have a deficiency of vitamin k so vitamin k is very useful in clotting of blood so any kind of wound if you are having so that will be very easily clotted if vitamin k is amp in ample amounts if it's present in your body now last but not the least let's come to the mineral deficiencies deficiency of iron causes anemia and deficiency of calcium causes the same diseases as vitamin d that is rickets and osteomalacia rickets and osteomalacia same if a person is having less calcium in his body okay iron deficiency of iron causes anemia because deformed hemoglobin and hemoglobin cannot carry oxygen to various parts if there is less amount of uh, iron in the body and let's come to iodine deficiency of iodine causes goiter and what is goiter jisko aap hindi mein bolte ho ghenga पहाड़ी इलाकों में रहने वालों को ज़्यादा क्यों हो जाता है ये क्योंकि वो लोग पहले ही सी फूड नहीं सी फूड तो है नहीं आसपास तो वो उनको जो समंदर की फिश वगैरह है फूड है वो नहीं मिल पाता तो फिर इन ये वो लोग हैं जो समंदर का फूड भी नहीं खाते हैं और आयोडाइज सॉल्ट भी नहीं खाते फिर ये हो जाता है इसलिए अगर आप पहाड़ों पर रह रहे हो आसपास कहीं सी फूड आपको नहीं मिल रहा तो यू हैव टू टेक केयर कि जो नमक आप खा रहे हो उसमें आयोडीन हो तो गोइटर इज कॉज ड्यू टू डेफिशियंसी ऑफ आयोडीन और इसमें होता क्या है इन्फ्लामेशन ऑफ सूज जाता है बुरी तरह से क्या इन्फ्लमेशन ऑफ थायरॉयड ग्लैंड स्वेलिंग आ जाती है थायरॉयड ग्लैंड में मेटाबॉलिज्म बुरी तरह इफेक्टिव हो जाता है पेनफुल कंडीशन है इलाज यही है कि फिर धीरे धीरे आयोडीन आपको दोबारा से कंटिन्यू करना पड़ेगा बट जो ग्वेटर हो गया वो एक बड़ी मुसीबत बन जाती है थैंक यू सो मच शेयर वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ सिक्स क्लास chapter components of food have a nice day thank you